in, uh, in line with our new Room 2 tradition. I'd like everyone to give a standing ovation to our last Room 2 speaker of Cloud Native Rejects 2023. And Faika Ansari, thank you. Okay, hi everyone. So first thing I would like to ask, it's in Indian terminology, how's the josh? Like how's the enthusiasm at the end of the day? <laughs> I really love that. So uh, hi, I'm Faika Ansari. Today my talk is basically on cracking the communication puzzle in open source communities. And open source communities specifically under CNCF. So this is going to be our agenda for today. That is, I would be covering 10 really cool topics. It won't be very complicated. It would be starting from like beginner level. And I would take you through what exactly I have learned across my journey in CNCF. Uh, from how the communication platforms work, how, uh, what methodologies do they use for cracking and for making collaboration more easier, and how does content, uh, how is content managed in these communities, how is social media helping open source communities, plus turning the chaos in uh, big projects like Kubernetes and Linux kernel into collaboration, into very healthy collaboration, successful. So all these things from evolution of the tools that we've been using and some simple case studies that I'll be covering in today's session. Talking about this, well, it's obviously important to know me. So I'm Faika Ansari, and I am doing a couple lot of things in Cloud Native, from being the Kubernetes v1.29 uh, release shadow and being a Linux Foundation intern or mentee under Istio Mesh, which is again a CNCF project. And I'm specifically contributing to Ambient Mesh. So if someone here is from solo.io or uh, contributes to Istio, I'd be really, really happy to meet with you all and talk more about it. And I'm also uh, Linux, uh, not Linux exactly, sorry. Uh, last week in Kubernetes Development Newsletters author and admin, one of the admins. Plus, I, um, I think that's pretty much my introduction. I also do upstream community work, like being a GitHub campus expert and Google developer student lead and Microsoft Learn student ambassador and stuff around. So if I'm also a beginner. Like, I'm not a very advanced person in cloud native field, but I'm learning and I'm, I'm super excited to meet you all here because maybe, uh, not maybe, obviously, I have lots of folks here that I will be learning from. <laughs> And I am really thankful to Cloud Native Rejects, obviously, for giving me this opportunity to be here on the stage and talk about myself and my learnings. So moving forward. Yes, my first thing is effective communication. So I believe effective communication is really crucial for any community. And when it comes to open source projects, it's obviously even more important. So when the contributors like us are contributing to communicate with these things effectively, they can actually collaborate on the projects more effectively. So when you know how to communicate in an open source project, that is where collaboration begins. And to effectively collaborate these projects, these open source projects needs to have quality settings in order to have these things implemented. So that's what I want to talk about today. Now, communicating uh, effectively in any open source community is not that easy, right? So contributors come from all over the world with different languages, with different time zones, and they want to contribute on the same page. So we need a really good system to handle all these complex uh, involvements in the open source projects and all these different tasks. So that is what is today's topic, and that is where right communication platform and methods comes in. By choosing the right uh, tools and using them effectively, these open source communities can overcome the challenges that folks face in communicating in these big organizations. So that is one thing. And the goal of uh, all the open source communities for communication should obviously be like I listed like here, like facilitating the collaboration and collaboration obviously because open source communities rely totally upon collaboration. And to develop and maintain the software, it is very important that there is effective collaboration in these softwares. 
and yes it is obviously essential for the all the contributions to work together effectively secondly there has to be engagement uh, which is again another goals of these platforms like open source communities are more than just groups of people working on a software so these open source communities are like uh, what do we call it a social um, community where people can not just work together but they also connect so that's what we actually plan to to help build a strong and engaged community that is one of the goal so i'll just quickly list out the goals here which is promoting transparency in these communities uh, from effective communication open source community really values transparency in their work and obviously accountability now what do we mean by accountability is we want to ensure that all the collaborations have a voice in a community so that's one of the thing which a uh, any of the open source project needs to make sure of and hence all the decisions should be made in a very transparent manner so this was just some of the goals that open source projects generally have uh, in terms of communication and we will see how huge open source communities like linux kernel or kubernetes are tackling these goals and making us collaborate so effectively to these communities so i've listed some communication platforms like we've been using mailing list slack discord and several other things and certain methods that we've been listing here but what is important to us is the hashtag one rule to be a part of these community as a contributor is to participate in the open source community and that is where it all begins and then secondly we start with the proven examples that i was about to talk about so who haven't hear, heard about kubernetes here almost all of us so <laughs> it would be funny if i ask <laughs> that in at a cloud native projects so it big uh, and if if in case somebody doesn't knows about it and it's new to cloud native i would be really really happy to help because there's something i would actually uh, have my expertise in so i would love to talk with you all in case not so everyone of us knows about kubernetes right because it is the second largest uh, os and uh, how do they manage their community this is the second largest open source organization i would say i would say how do they manage their communication specifically so they have several uh, settings like sigs and sub projects github mailing list and events and meetups so if we come across this um, one second yeah so all of us knows about kubernetes obviously because it is the second largest of open source organizations now how do they manage their communications and collaborations so effectively so talking about it well it does have four really cool things that is done like really well talk uh, starting with sigs and sub projects so kubernetes entirely is divided into a number of sigs from search so it has special interest groups and sub projects which is uh, and each of these sub projects has its own leads and an entire team who work on the documentation its its code side and other resources so these sigs really help to manage the whole open source software as well as the communication between these teams are very effective so it is just like managing several services and the communication between those services just what istio does so it's similar to what sigs does in kubernetes 
Secondly, the GitHub. So Kubernetes project is completely hosted on GitHub, like we know, where all the code and documentation is stored. And GitHub provides a number of features that makes it really easy to manage the content, be it from the PRs or the issues or managing the automations, tracking stuff, tracking the branches, uh, making the collaborations much more easier. So Kubernetes also have several roles at GitHub, like be it the admin role or maintainer's role, reviewer's role. All these things makes it very easy for folks like us who are beginners who wants to contribute to know their role in Kubernetes and effectively communicate with the roles, like the leads or the reviewers, that way. Then Kubernetes also hosts events and meetups, which is another asynchronous way of uh, meeting with folks, connecting with them uh, throughout the year, be it, for, be it at KubeCon NA or Europe or CDs around the countries and globe. So these events also provides an opportunity for effective communication to meet in person and also learn from each other. Similarly, mailing lists and slacks, I would say. Kubernetes uses a number of mailing systems and collaborations that these channels are used to discuss new features, ask questions, so many things around. So this is one of the way Kubernetes, four of the ways, sorry, that Kubernetes is using to troubleshoot their communication problems in the community. It doesn't end here. This is just lovely communication way. We are just trying to learn from the leaders and what, uh, how Kubernetes is managing their communication problems. So it uses a number of tools and resources. It's not doing it all by itself in the software, right? So one second. So this is Kubernetes documentation. Talking about first, uh, what we learn from Kubernetes is the documentation itself. So Kubernetes documentation is like a really comprehensive guide that Kubernetes uses. And it covers all the aspects of the project, be it from the code part or understanding the release notes and everything. So the community is upgrading and updating all these documentations regularly. And that is all done via Kubernetes documentation team. It has an entire team that is handling the docs. Similarly, Kubernetes has a blogs team. So the blog is used to publish the news in Kubernetes about the projects and stuff. Just like I have also been a contributor to Kubernetes blogs at several times. So there are contributors coming from different places and they want to contribute effectively to these blogs where they get a voice. They can get to voice their opinions, they get to voice their foundings in Kubernetes. We have several blogs like Six Spotlight blogs to uh, name a few. So what we do at Six Spotlight blogs is we basically just give a spotlight to some good contributors in Kubernetes. We talk about them in our blog. So this is how the communication is managed in blogs. We convey our needs, we convey our docs, we convey our uh, solutions through blog writing. Similarly, Kubernetes social media, it has lots of social media platforms. It manages Twitter, and it's also managing its website and stuff. So that's how communication is managed in Kubernetes community, where the communication is obviously great. OK. Now. Since the last part of it is turning chaos into collaboration. That's one of the part of agenda today. So we have seen that establishing a clear guideline and for code of conduct and all those things uh, is not that easy one. Yeah. So there's a lot of chaos that comes handy when we talk about large open source communities. So turning this chaos in open source projects into collaboration is one of the goals of such projects. And that is why we are going to discuss some proven techniques and strategies that these communities are using to tackle these things. Uh, starting with establishing a clear communication guideline and code of conduct for all the community members, like I've written. So we need to ensure that there are clear guidelines mentioned for the ones who want to communicate in the community, who want to start, begin communicating, 
or network in the community. So there has to be uh, a structured guideline for the same. There needs to be structured meetings. So if I talk about myself, when I was starting off in open source community, uh, the meetings was one of the way I got involved through. So we need really uh, structure, good structured meetings with defined agendas, with defined facilitators. This will prevent the meetings from becoming a lot chaotic, and this ensures that the discussions are very focused. So this is one of the way Kubernetes handles its chaos. That is, it has structured meetings. It has meetings for each and every SIG, and it has leaders who handles it. So they have facilitators for each of these SIGs and domains, which makes it a lot less chaotic. Then we have collaboration tools. Now, what do we mean by collaboration tool is Kubernetes in itself utilizes a lot of collaboration tools like project management softwares and issue tracking systems. Then it comes from instant messaging platforms like Slack. Then it also streamlines the communication and project organization. We have meetings on Zoom calls and stuff like that. So we're using several tools for managing several things. The most important aspect, like I spoke of earlier, is transparency. So Kubernetes is one of the most transparent organizations that I've been a part of. Everything that happens here has been transparent, and I've seen them emphasizing to the importance of transparency in even decision making. So they share like reasoning behind all the decisions that they make in the community, and it involves a lot of discussions in the community. How does that happen? We have regular mailing lists through which the discussions is happening. We have polls going on. And we take regular votings and stuff, which is all very transparent. So that's how a community becomes way less chaotic. It's not just anyone randomly taking decisions. There is a lot of mentoring and onboarding in Kubernetes. Regularly, every day, uh, new folks join in Kubernetes organization. They want a mentorship and stuff. And they have their support through the Slack channels, or be it GitHub issue, or whatever, or through the meetings. So they have developed that mentoring and onboarding programs to help new contributors to in, uh, come together and smoothly contribute to these projects. And this definitely reduces a lot of confusion in this organization. Then coming to document and knowledge sharing, we also obviously at Kubernetes prioritize the creation and maintenance of comprehensive documentation. So from blogs to having guidelines to user guides and everything, the knowledge is shared and is accessible to all the users through GitHub and several other platforms. That's one thing. There is a feedback mechanism, which is one of my favorite. Uh, it uh, has a feedback mechanism where all the community members have a voice. They can provide their input. They can report their issues and improvements, everything in a very structured manner. There is an issue system and everything. So that's one of the ways they have uh, tackled their chaotic uh, communication problems. There is role decisions that is made at this organization that I've seen. Clear, it defines the roles very clearly. It has the responsibilities divided. And all of that is mentioned on a readme markdown file on GitHub. So that's how communication is managed. It is ensuring that everyone understands what their role is in the, in the entire collaboration process. Then there is inclusive decision making. Uh, Kubernetes, as an organization, have uh, promoted inclusivity in its decision making. In it gives voices and perspectives, ensures that all the decisions are made collectively and not by a single entity. So that's one of the thing we have scheduled works and scheduled sessions for all the time zones. We keep that in mind. We emphasize the importance of transparency. These are several things that Kubernetes keeps in mind and has a lot for us to learn from when we manage our own community or open source project. Um, it could be anything. So these are some simple things that we can learn from Kubernetes uh, and other CNCF organizations that are doing really great today on how they manage their chaotic schedule and promote so much of collaboration. Yeah. Now, moving ahead. Talking about inclusive communication. So like I said already, understanding diverse audiences is very important. And I really believe Kubernetes have actually handled that really well, since I have only five minutes. And I have several case studies to share as well. <laughs> you can have 10 minutes. OK. So I'll try to. By emphasizing the importance of understanding diverse backgrounds, experiences, and stuff, uh, 
Kubernetes is doing a great job with it. I'm really sorry if my voice is lacking. I actually have a jet lag. I traveled <laughs> right in the morning, having a slight headache, but yeah, I'm trying my best. And I really appreciate the happy faces. <laughs> yeah. So about inclusive communication, we have multilingual support in Kubernetes that comes in. So you see people from different countries coming together. They are even helping Kubernetes with converting the language of the GitHub documentations. It discusses the benefits of providing content in multiple languages. It makes con communication so much easier. So that's one of the ways we really learn how inclusivity is managed in Kubernetes, not, not just in Kubernetes, but in any of the uh, flourishing open source organizations. They have their own accessibility standards. So what we mean by this is they emphasize the importance of following accessibility standards to make sure that the content is usable by individuals with disabilities as well. So that's one thing that Kubernetes is handling. And I was a part of GitHub Campus Expert, like I said. I've seen them as an organization also handle these standards. These are the things that makes a community really, really uh, collaborative. And that is how communication struggles are actually tackled in the community. So when we include these things, such as like those screen readers and stuff, that's pretty helpful. Then we have inclusive language, Kubernetes and other organizations also promote the use of inclusive language and code of conducts. There is diversity in leadership positions. Like I spoke about release shadow program uh, that I was a part of in Kubernetes. We have diversity in the leadership roles. We make sure that our team has people from all, like at least different regions, different genders, different diverse um, categories. So that is how Kubernetes is also, not Kubernetes only, I don't know why I'm just saying Kubernetes. <laughs> I want to talk about all the uh, flourishing open source organizations that have tackled the communication problems in their organizations. So these organizations have committed to diversity in leadership. So this is one thing, and that is one reason that you see an organization so uh, much famous and so much spoken about. So this is one thing. Apart from this cultural sensitivity, now, we obviously at Kubernetes and other organizations value everyone and encourage everyone for respectful of their cultures and their traditions. Um, a good example of which would be, okay, I'm not having one in my mind right now, but yeah. So we definitely uh, try to prohibit discrimination and stuff at Kubernetes and open source organization to tackle these problems. I have spoke about feedback mechanism, which we have, and which actually facilitates the inclusive communication. And that's how we see the evolution of communication tools. So in these organizations, we've seen a huge evolution from, initially we used to use mails and mailing lists. So the global communication was enabled and collaboration used to have, happen through mailing lists. In the late 1990s, uh, like there was because of the geographical boundaries and stuff, the open and inclusive discussion used to happen through mailing lists only. But then in the mid 2000s, I guess we switched to SVN and Git. And now from mid 2010s, we are using Slack, Zoom calls, and Discord as a platform. So this is how communication tools have evolved, and speed and performance have also increased, obviously. Like the get speed and performance was advantageous for projects of all sizes. It reduced a lot of latency in the development workflows and it improved a lot of productivity. Plus, uh, the impact of GitHub as well uh, was closely tied to the platforms like Git and it also revolutionized the whole open source collaboration thing. So these are some of the things that really helped in tackling the communication struggles in open source projects. Yeah, and these were some previously used strategies, uh, like some examples of strategies that is used by Linux kernel community, Mozilla Foundation, and OpenStack community, which are really flourishing right now. Starting with Linux kernel community, they have their own mailing list. So this community basically uses a mailing list as a primary communication platform, which allows developers to discuss the ideas, the purpose changes, and also review the patches. So uh, the mailing list is like open to everyone. 
and who wants to participate and it is archived for easy reference. Similarly, there are regular releases in the Linux kernel community and how the community releases a new version of the kernel every few months and this also allows developers to plan their work accordingly and ensures that a new feature and the bug fixes are delivered to users in a very timely manner. Then Linux kernel community also has like really clear documentation. So it maintains a very clear and comprehensive documentation that really helps developers understand how they want to con contribute to it. Understanding from Mozilla Foundation, they have their blogging system. So basically they share their updates on its projects and community events and other news through blogs. The blog is like open to comments and allowing readers to engage with Mozilla staff and each other. They have social media pages where they have a like really strong presence. Mozilla has a really strong presence on social media, specifically on Twitter and Facebook. And they use these uh, platforms to share their news updates and engage with its community. They also have community events happening where they organize events such as conferences and workshops, which makes it very easy. So this is some of the booming facts about Mozilla Foundation. And then comes open source communities, open stack community, sorry which have its own forums, use, uh, forums that it uses as its primary mode of communication. And it also have user groups like we have in Kubernetes, that is special interest groups. This community has user groups in various regions around the world. And these groups are basically uh, providing a platform for community members to meet and collaborate. And yeah, they have really good documentation. So that was about the case study and about the growth of Linux the growth of Kubernetes, and the role of communication in open source companies. So about the growth of Linux, I guess I've already spoke of it. That is, uh, Linus Torvalds effectively communicated with uh, the open source community to build one of the most widely used operating system, that is Linux, in the world. Through several strategies, they started using open mailing lists. Clear, they had a clear vision, and obviously an inclusive approach. <laughs> and a revision control system. So that's one thing. With constructive criticism, and that's what we learned from the Linux community. Coming to the growth of Kubernetes, it's again the same. The initial development was open sourced by Google in 2014. And this obviously moved, uh, the move allowed uh, the developers and the community to collaborate more effectively. That's one thing for us to learn, how the communication became so easier in Kubernetes after it moved separately to, uh, and facilitated the rapid development and improvements. So the community adoption of Kubernetes also gained like quick, uh, quick adoption rule uh, to its flexible and robust container orchestration rules. So that's something. Plus Kubernetes has a really cool ecosystem expansion, I would say, uh, like an extensive uh, expansion of the tools and services that Kubernetes uses including the Helm for uh, package management or Prometheus for tracking and monitoring and Istio for service mesh. So all these things further enhances its appeal. It also meets the industry standards and it's also CNCF governed. So that was one thing. And we saw the role of communication in open source communities and companies, the community engagements and stuff. So in conclusion, I would suggest <laughs> the four common to bees to be a part of it. Be clear and concise. Avoid using jargons in open source community. Be very clear when you are communicating with people through GitHub or whatever. Be active, be respectful, inclusive, and be willing to help others because that's how we all grow. And I guess that's where I am here and looking forward to speak with you all. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bang on time. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. OK, so that was the last talk of Room 2 for this year's Cloud Native Rejects. Um, the remaining talks will be the lightning talks in Room 1. So one more, please, uh, standing ovation for our final speaker, <laughs> Faika. <laughs> and please, a round of applause for yourselves. You've been a fantastic audience. Thank you.